And welcome back to tomorrow. Now, before we get started with our main topic this week, I did want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons of tomorrow who've helped to make this specific segment of this episode happen. These are people who've contributed $10 or more to this specific episode. You can also find our tomorrow producers. These are people who've contributed $5 or more to this specific episode. We are a crowdfunded show, and you can help us out by heading over to patreon.com slash tmro. See the different rewards that you get for different levels, as well as all the different goals that we've got going on, because we're trying to do quite a bit of stuff before we hit orbit 10. All right, uh, on to our main topic, because it's uh, some pretty cool news out of, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I think, wait, wait, you're more excited than Space Mike. I figured we'd have to get like Space Mike a bag to breathe in or something. Uh. <laughs> this, is, this is just kind of a little. <laughs> out of no Nowhere enters a blue origin. Oh, by the way, guys, uh, we have a rocket. So yeah, that's kind of right? what Blue Origin did. So, right? blue, hang on, I mean, let's telling the story of Blue Origin a little bit. Jeff Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon.com, <laughs> uh, huge space nut, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he owns Blue Origin as well. He also went to the bottom of the sea and pulled up some of the old F1 engines from Saturn V. Yeah. Right. So I mean, on his own dime, he, he's just doing this because. Space nerd, hardcore space nerd. Yeah, and he's had Blue Origin for. Didn't they start before SpaceX? Ever? Yeah, I'm yeah. here. I think, I think I'll look older, it up, but yeah. So I believe space, uh, Blue Origin is older than SpaceX, and here you've got SpaceX going up. They've got you know they're on their whatever generation of rocket. They've mm -hmm. got you know pla Mars plans being announced later this this month. I mean a whole bunch of really cool things, but you never heard anything anything out of Blue Origin. Maybe you'd hear, oh, we think they did a test firing of something. September and then, 2000. Yeah, and then yes. September, there you go, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then fairly recently, um, we started hearing more about them with United Launch Alliance. They announced that their BE-4 engine was gonna be uh, the main power plant for Vulcan uh, to the dismay of Aerojet Rocketdyne. And um, you're like, okay, I guess they're working on engines. I guess, yeah. right. and then they're like, oh, by the way, we've got this vehicle, we're gonna fly it, and it's gonna be reusable, and we're gonna land it. And we're like, all right, well, maybe that'll happen someday in the future, and then like two weeks later, like, and here's footage of that. And we're like, oh, okay. Oh, by the way. Uh, <laughs> that came out of nowhere, all right, cool. Uh, and then they did it a couple more times, and we're like, all right, that, that's really awesome. And then, uh, then they started live webcasting it, and, and it just has been kind of growing. And yeah. then recently we got an email, anyone who you can sign up to Blue Origin Updates, and everyone, it was like, what, Thursday morning, Wednesday morning, something like that, got this email from Jeff Bezos, yeah. basically saying, hey, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, and Space Mike, you did a space pod on this. You wanna describe what they're gonna do with their next uh, New Shepard vehicle? Well, with my uh, the space pod that I did uh, uh, for this week, which uh, I put out on Wednesday, which uh, you guys should walk, I, act I actually was focusing more on their next and uh, final flight of their current uh, New Shepard rocket. And uh, I wanted to kind of hold off on this whole New Glenn announcement for uh, the show today. But uh, with this, there was actually an email update last week where uh, Jeff Bezos was describing what they're going to be doing with the fifth flight of New Shepard. And with that, they might destroy the rocket when uh, they try to do an in-flight uh, escape test is what they're calling it, where they're going to be launching, or rather firing, a solid rocket motor that is built into the capsule of the New Shepard uh, system, the, the New Shepard uh, capsule, I suppose. And they're going to be firing that during maximum dynamic pressure. And they suspect that the, the rocket, the New Shepard rocket, will be destroyed when they do that. But if it survives, great. But uh, in any case, they are planning on flying that rocket for the last time until they roll out another New Shepard rocket to continue with their tests we're at and, and eventually to continue with, uh, or rather to begin, their uh, t suborbital tourist market. Um, but with this whole new Glenn announcement, the uh, announcement that came this week, they announced what their next big plan is going to be. And Jeff Bezos has alluded to in the past that they are going to have a orbital rocket. And it wasn't until, I believe, like a month or two ago that we even uh, started uh, hearing what they internally were calling it, or at least their nickname for it, which uh, they were calling Very Big Brother. And from the pictures that we saw um, that Jeff Bezos put out earlier, which, you know, were, were kind of low-def uh, quality pictures, uh, you know, quick an uh, animation there. But it, he described it as being a much larger rocket with a new Shepard rocket as the upper stage. And just from the size of what those old pictures looked like, it looked like it would be, you know, something that would be on the size of like a Delta II rocket or maybe even around the same uh, size and diameter as, as a Falcon 9 rocket, although not as tall. 
And then he puts out this update this week that actually shows what they're planning on doing with their new Glenn rocket that they previously were calling Very Big Brother. And this is pretty insane. It's uh, 23 feet in diameter, which is about seven, a uh, little over seven meters in diameter. That is a really fat rocket. And it's going to be one of the widest ones. It's going to be uh, wider than the Falcon 9. It's going to be wider than the Delta IV, uh, just the, the main core stage. And it's almost as big as a Saturn V rocket. And this thing was, uh, let me see again, it was um, 313 feet tall, which uh, uh, I can't remember what the conversion for that is off the top of my head. It's about 95 meters. Uh, Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little, little over uh, 95 meters. But in any case, that's a pretty tall rocket and pretty wide too. And they're going to be using this thing. There we go. Uh, for those of you who couldn't hear, Dutta just informed me that the Saturn V was 333 uh, um, feet tall. So just about uh, 20 feet short of uh, what the Saturn V was. And with this, they're going to be doing the whole reusable uh, landing that they have been previously been doing with the new Shepard rocket and that SpaceX has been doing with their Falcon 9. And it's really exciting. We have uh, animations here that show uh, how they're going to be doing this. And I really like the way that the landing legs are built into uh, the kind of engine skirt, if you will, for this. And I'm really excited about it because uh, it's going to have, uh, it could pot potentially have three stages to it. Uh, the first stage would be powered by uh, their BE4 engines, and the second stage would be powered by a vacuum optimized BE4 engine, which just means that the way that the, the engine bell is shaped and the way that they uh, combust their, their fuels together is optimized for uh, without being inside of the atmosphere. But uh, again, I just really, I'm really excited about this announcement and really excited to see you know, what other sort of information they're going to reveal to us. I would not be surprised based on, you know, how the information came out with their new Shepard rocket that they've already been doing quite a bit of testing and we might see some, you know, physical hardware very soon. So, ah, it's really exciting. It is exciting stuff. Now, those animations you saw were not official Blue Origin animations. That was actually a Citizen of Tomorrow. It's uh, Atlee Tobias and uh, who may, I forgot to put the banner at the bottom of them, so I'm a terrible human being, but uh, created those and uh, said, hey, if you want to use them in the show, you totally can. That's based on the imagery that, so it's purely based on the, the one or two pictures yeah. that Blue Origin has given out. So they could be wrong, but it, it kind of gives you an idea as to what the rocket may look like. I thought that was really, really awesome. So yeah. uh, uh, thank you for making those. Um, it's going to be exciting and huge. I didn't think to grab the, the, the graphic that has, I should have, the graphic that has all the rockets side by side showing how oh, absolutely man. enormous this thing is. It's going to be huge. But going backwards yeah. a step, uh, back to New Shepard. Mm -hmm. uh, New Shepard is going to be awesome because that webcast, Jeff Bezos said they're going to webcast that, and they are expecting mm -hmm. a rapid unscheduled disassembly. Actually, I guess that would be a rapid scheduled disassembly. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Uh, yes. of, yeah. Of their first stage during the abort. So they're going to do one of the things, one of the reasons capsules are awesome when they sit on top of a rocket is if something happens to the rocket, you can safely jettison. Now, I say safely, it is not going to be a fun ride. No. But you can, you can jettison that rocket, or I'm sorry, you can jettison the capsule off of the rocket uh, and, and move to safety. Yes. The hardest part of that is going to be during max Q, the area of ma maximum dynamic pressure. That's where you're moving just fast enough through just thick enough air where it's putting the most amount of strain on the vehicle itself. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to have any weird variations in the aerodynamic yep. structure of the rocket because you're putting all of this force on the rocket. So what they're going to do is they're going to put a huge amount of additional aerodynamic strain on it by then uh, in issue, uh, issuing the abort command. So they're going to be in max Q, in that maximum aerodynamic envelope, and they're going to say abort. And they're going to take the top of the rocket and jettison it off. And the aerodynamic uh, uncertainty underneath it is likely going to rip apart the first stage. Yes. So now that, that's what's expected. In the email, Jeff Bezos said, however, a few of the Monte Carlo runs, where they run the data over and over and over again in different scenarios, a few of these runs show it's technically possible that we could recover the first stage. It, it, it's a low probability, but it's technically, it could happen. So, one of two amazing, epic, awesome things is going to happen. First, you're going to see this giant explosion 
in the air at like <laughs> like, like Mach 1 with his vehicle just ripping itself to shreds as the capsule moves to safety. That is going to be awesome. Or two, the vehicle is going to be able to survive that and safely land back on their landing pad okay. while the capsule goes to safety, which is also going to be absolutely <laughs> awesome because then they can take it and they can be like, this is, this is a masterpiece of, of awesomeness. We're going to put it in a museum kind this of This is an engineering god. Ka kind of, right? Basically. So, yeah, so I yeah. actually, uh, I mean, that we should take a... a like virtual bets. I'm in the it's gonna rip itself apart bet. Okay. Area, right? I think I'll join you in the rip itself apart yeah, I, bet. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna survive. Because this is this is an abort at the worst possible moment. Space Mike? Abort. Uh, there is one, one other option as to how uh, it might play out. He said that if somehow it did survive uh, the, the abort itself and they weren't able to restart the engine to safely land and put it on a, a display, <laughs> that there'll be enough fuel left over inside of the tanks that when it does come crashing down, then it'll have its uh, rapid scheduled disassembly. I that suppose. one would be unscheduled. I think that would be, a, I yeah. think the scheduled disassembly is during the uh, Max Q uh, uh, automatic abort. <laughs> I think an unscheduled disassembly would yeah. be it smashing into the ground at, you know, that just be below more, mock speed. That might be more an unscheduled con conflagration. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Carry on. When do I get to see oh. the scheduled reassembly? <laughs> well, that's, okay, so that's the thing mm. with Blue Origin. We don't, like, they could, for all we know, they have another vehicle in their hangar ready to go, and they'll just, they'll blow up the landing pad and be like, that was cool. Hey, we're going to launch tomorrow again on an upgraded vehicle that, you know, takes all the lessons learned from the first one and uh -huh. makes it even more awesome. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. I have no. I have no clue what they've got. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's going to be an exciting webcast. They're going to webcast it live, and I think we said this on a previous show. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, I, I guarantee there was a team inside of Blue Origin that fought to allow them to webcast these. And so whoever championed that yes. inside of Blue Origin, because there, there was a you know a small. I'm sure there was a small group of people. There was someone who champ. Whoever championed that. Thank you. Thank for, you. From not just the citizens of tomorrow, but all the space nerds around the world. Thank you for doing that because this is going to be awesome. And we are super, super excited for this particular uh, launch, and, uh, launch and landing, possible landing, or disassembly, whatever that is. Yes. Then yeah. they come out with, as Space Mike mentioned, the new Glenn announcement. Mm -hmm. Now, I felt like a stupid, stupid space nerd when he announced New Glenn. And here's why. I never realized until he announced New Glenn that New Shepard was named after Alan Shepard. <laughs> he said that, he, he, and then I saw New Glenn, I'm like, why would they call it, oh my God, I'm an idiot. <laughs> I, I legitimately, I should have known better as a space nerd, and I felt so stupid. Uh, apparently, Dutt is saying I'm not alone. You aren't alone, Ben. I didn't think <laughs> so, about that either. I, I, so. I figured it out. I feel less dumb now. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, some of, some yeah. people are like, really, yeah, in the, the chat room? Yeah, I mean, the naming convention wasn't readily apparent. No. Uh, Shepard has a tendency to shepherd new things in. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could have got, the very next one could have been New Pioneer. It very, you know, just new colonist. Space Kyle like we, says, we I very, had the exact same reaction. We very I know. easily could have gone. Shepard was not inherently, yeah. So as Space Mike said, New Shepard is one ginormous rocket. It is nearly Saturn V size. This thing. The, the new Glenn. New Glenn. I'm sorry, New Glenn. Yeah, new I'm sorry, I'm sorry. New Glenn, New Glenn. <laughs> new, uh, new Shepard. No, no, New, new, new Shepard, yeah. No, New Glenn <laughs> is a ginormous rocket. It's going to be awesome, and it's going to fly, according to Blue Origin, by the end of the decade. So they've got, what, four uh, years uh, left. Uh, That's not so, a lot of time. I just want to throw Less this out. Than four years. I just want to throw this out there because they also revealed the name of their upcoming rocket yes. after New Glenn as well. Well, wait, hang on. Before we do that, yeah, yeah, I, I want to yeah, I want to yes. draw a parallel here, okay. right? So, sure. New Shepard is their suborbital vehicle. Yep. Alan Shepard suborbital sub flights. Yeah. New Glenn. Oh, thank you, Dada. So here we go. Actually, here here's here's a graphic, right? So there you can kind of see. I uh, I believe I can't really read it from here, but I think uh, is New Shepard on there the, anywhere? Uh, New Shepard is not on there anywhere. Okay, but the, it would have been the on the one left. On the left is Antares. It'd, yeah, it'd be, it'd be like way to the left to give you an idea of the size of what they're flying right now. It'd yeah, be they kind of kept way, all there, so let's yeah. way, so, way to the left, so, like all the way to the left. So if I'm looking at this correctly from left to right, you've got Antares, Soyuz, Ariane 5, Atlas 5, Delta 4, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Delta 4 Heavy. 
Vulcan. Vulcan. Okay, yeah. sorry, I can't really see all yeah, that. Yeah, it's, well it's, the screens are this far. So Vulcan, so. Fal Falcon Nine, Falcon Heavy, Falcon. Delta Four Heavy, and now we start getting into new Glenn sizes, <laughs> right? And then, and you look to the far right, the the rocket that took humans to the moon, the Saturn Five. That's all the way right. So you look at the three stage new Glenn. It's nearly as tall as a Saturn Five. Yeah. It's it's ginormous. That is going to be an epic rocket of epic epicness. The first stage is taller than, the, or it's longer uh, than he, the Saturn here's the thing, first stage. Here's the thing with that new Glenn. New oh, Shepard, yeah. suborbital vehicle, Alan Shepard, suborbital flight. New Glenn is not a suborbital vehicle. It is an no. orbital vehicle. Yes. Mm -hmm. John Glenn, first, first. Or, first American to orbit. Uh -huh. They did announce, they teased a third vehicle, a new Armstrong. Oh. If we were to follow that same convention, we can deduce <laughs> and this is just us speculating. They've never, they've not said anything. We no. can deduce that Jeff Bezos agrees with tomorrow and Dave Mastin mm -hmm. to go to the moon first. He's part, he should be wearing a moon first shirt. Probably. Jeff Bezos, I would like to see you wear a moon first shirt. That would confirm my theory. Uh, but Looney you confirmed, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, it sounds like if I were to extrapolate their naming conventions with rockets, <laughs> New Armstrong may be a lunar type of architecture, uh -huh. I might, know, right? It might be. It, might, it may not be. It, However, yeah, the true. other way to look at that yeah. is that Neil Armstrong was not only the first American, but the first human on another celestial body. Mm -hmm. That's, That's true. true. You don't have to look at it specifically as the moon, per you, se. You don't. You don't. I, this even is the why, new this Glenn is, rocket could send stuff to the moon. It could send a lot of the uh, the teams competing in the uh, Google Lunar X Prize. It could send a lot of their hardware. I mean, yeah. it, it's capable enough, or at least uh, according to the specifications that they've put out. Citizen uh, 38, uh, thir or 38916 says, so if Elon becomes the first man on Mars, will Bezos name a new rocket New Musk? Maybe. That would be kind of <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> it doesn't seem like Jeff Bezos views... Uh, there was an interview, and I, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but you, you were reading about a recent interview, yeah. and it seems like Jeff Bezos is not... Actually, it wasn't an interview. It was when he, he won the Highland Prize, Sure. and he was gonna, he's going to give that money uh, back into the program. So, uh, basically, he, he seems to think that his big com competition isn't SpaceX, it's not uh, United Launch Alliance, it's not Ariane. No, which a lot of people were, I'm sure, confused by until he put out his next sentence. What, did anyone know who his big competition is? Gravity. He gravity. competes with yep. gravity, gravity. Yep. every that's... day. That's his competition. <laughs> is <laughs> gravity, and and I thought that was a great quote. Uh, and you know, he's just he's just working to do these really cool, amazing space things. So I am super duper excited for New Glenn. Yes. And the timeline given, right, three to four years or so, seems potentially viable. I I mean, we don't have really insight into that. It's reasonable. But it's re it's a reasonable time frame. Um, New Armstrong, he didn't get a timeline, he didn't give any data on it outside of that's a future story, mm -hmm. but that's exciting stuff. Yeah. So we've gone from, over the course of this year, 2016, just mm -hmm. this year, uh -huh. mm -hmm. not caring at all about Blue Origin and thinking, yeah, they're just dorking around with engines, to, oh my God, they're doing awesome things. Uh, and I'm super excited. Uh, I, I just, I cannot wait to see what the future brings. We have yeah. got so many awesome announcements coming from Blue Origin, from SpaceX. Uh, Sierra Nevada continues to try and do great things with mm -hmm. um, uh, Dream Chaser. Yeah. I've got Mast and Space Systems coming back on the show. Hopefully he'll be able to talk about some cool stuff well. And well. Virgin Galactic is flying again. Virgin mm -hmm. Galactic is flying again. By the way, yep. we've got uh, the CEO of Virgin Galactic coming on the show later this year as well. Our president of Virgin Galactic. Ah, yeah. president of Virgin Galactic coming on the show later this year. So, um... Yeah, awesome things. I know this is such a really <laughs> exciting time.